This video follows the tutorial on the Epic website for using a MetaHuman as a third-person character. I've condensed the page into a 10-step graphic for use as a reference. If that is all that interests you, stop the video here and go ahead and get creating. Alternatively, you can go download the image from my Bitbucket and use as your own reference. The rest of this video is a demonstration of each of these steps. Step 1. Create a Blueprint class that uses the character as its parent, or, for ease of use, copy the third-person character blueprint that the engine provides in its starter content. I'm going to call this MH for MetaHuman. Step 2. Download and export your MetaHuman from Quixel Bridge. I won't show the whole process here, but basically you create your MetaHuman, it shows up in Quixel Bridge, you download it, and then you'll add it to your project using the little add plus button or the arrow. If you run into problems like I did, when you try to add the MetaHuman to your project, you won't get a progress bar. And that progress bar shows you that it's copying files over to the current project that you have open in the engine. So if that happens, go ahead and close down the engine, open it back up, and everything should again work as normal. Step three, once you have your MetaHuman exported and it is in your project, go ahead and open up this new blueprint class that you've made. Um, and by new, I mean duplicated from the third person project. I'm gonna go ahead and open the content drawer here. Content, MetaHumans, Peyton was the name of my exported MetaHuman and open this blueprint. Now, if you'll notice, this blueprint has a parent class of actor, and you can't use that with a player controller. Uh, that's I ran into some issues with that when I tried to make my AI run in my Game Jam game, as opposed to this third-person character, which has a parent class of character, as it's supposed to. Nope, auto save, love that. Open this and let's pull it out and expand it. Step four, copy all of the components underneath the body, which is going to be all of these. Now, quick tip, if you have this collapsed, the face component, and you try to shift select all of these. If you expand this, you'll notice that these did not get selected. So make sure you expand everything and then shift select to grab it all. Then go ahead and right click and copy. And then over in your, in my case, the third person character blueprint class, do a right click and paste. Step five, once you pasted everything in, go ahead and if you haven't clicked on anything else, that should all still be highlighted. Um, otherwise, just control select everything that you've pasted and parent it to the mesh character mesh zero. So all of your components that you pasted should be a child of this skeletal mesh component. Now you'll notice you lose the parenting for everything under the face like you have over here. So let's just do a quick check, make sure we have everything. We've got our face component. And underneath that, we've got all of the, the fuzz, eyelashes, eyebrows, hair, mustache, and beard, great. And we've got legs, feet, and torso. Legs, feet, and torso, great. So let's control select everything that should be parented under the face and we'll just click and move it underneath. And now just like over here, we have our face, everything underneath, and then all that. Step six, let's copy our level of details over. So copy, paste. Step seven, we need to reset the location, rotation, and scale so that our character will be in the correct orientation. So let's select everything that we've pasted so far. And if I expand this, go to the location of rotation and you can just reset this and it will be zero. Looks like I've missed the torso. 
and now everything should be good to go. Step eight, let's go ahead and select this parent mesh uh, component. And in the details panel, let's change our skeletal mesh to just be our uh, metahuman. So all metahumans follow the same convention, body of gender, um, a size, I think, something else. Anyway, um, you can type that in. I have a bunch of metahumans in my scene, so I just want to make sure that this is the right one. And the path fits. It's the Peyton female character. I click that, and it takes over. This is now our skeletal mesh. Step nine, go ahead and check the materials. Now in my case, this automatically populated with the correct value. If it didn't, make sure that it you change it to your uh, body synthesized material. Once you've done that, go ahead and compile and save. And this character should be ready for action. We can go ahead and close this, close this. Now my case, in my case, I don't have any player starts in my level. I just dragged my uh, blueprint in, and then I went ahead and set the auto possess player to zero. Now I want to make sure that my other auto possess player has been disabled, and it has. So now if I click play, I now have this A posed character that I can move around as part of the character controller. It's great. It's just what we wanted. And there's an error I will have to fix later. As a little bonus, let's go ahead and talk about AI characters and metahumans. So I have this guy back here. He spawns into the scene after about two minutes. About two minutes. He spawns in after two minutes. And he's going to walk up here to this front area. And he's supposed to trigger a scene. Didn't quite get there. Um... So what we've got is a nav mesh. If I can click it, I've already got it selected. And if I press P, I'll show this is the walkable area. Uh, it's pretty sloppily put together, but there it is. And he's going to walk to this target. Now, the problem I was running into, I initially just dropped in this BP crowd character from the city sample crowd um, asset pack on the Unreal Marketplace. But if you look, the native parent class is a skeletal mesh actor. And skele skeletal mesh actors do not work with nav mesh bounds as of right now. So kind of drove me crazy. I could get the, the walking animation was working, spawning in at the correct time, but there was absolutely no movement. So if you ever run into that, uh, make sure to look at the class and see if it's of the right type to even move around your level. Um, so here's a quick way to to get around this or change it. Is if you right click and we're going to duplicate and we'll just leave it oh, metahuman. There we go. So skill still a skeletal mesh actor. So if I open this up and if I go to class settings, you'll see that the parent class is skeletal mesh actor. And if I change this to be a character, uh, it's going to warn you. And if I reparent, then just like that, the parent class is now of type character, which means all of the character type things or pawn uh, actions that can be taken will now work with this blueprint, which is great. Yeah, you'll see I've got a bunch of warnings, also a bunch of errors, and this is related to the name here. So this mesh was renamed to character mesh zero, whereas in my blueprint, I have it set to skeletal mesh component. So it's as easy as dragging in a reference 
and replacing this and doing it for each error. I'm just going to control C. And if I hit compile, all the warnings and the errors are gone and we're back up and running. So an extremely quick fix. It may not work in all cases, but for sure is something to keep in your tool belt. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and do all the things. You know which ones. And then get out of here and go make some cool stuff. Or don't. You know, it's your life. Do whatever.